If you're transsexual, there will come a point in life when you have to decide if you want to take that final step. I look and behave like a woman. I'm emotionally and psychologically female. But without that last step, I still feel incomplete. Are you telling us then, Mirabella, that the operation makes you a complete woman? Because if I'm not wrong, I was told that transsexuals who have undergone the sex change operation cannot enjoy sex the way a normal woman can. But are you sure that normal women enjoy sex? <laughs> That's what most men believe, but it is not always true, right? Right. I have friends whose boyfriends or husbands think they have great sex, but it's so easy for a woman to just lie there and pretend. <sighs> 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 same. I tell you, these local men, they only know how to make jokes about us. But deep down, I think they're scared that men find it hard to accept us because they don't know where they stand with us. They can't decide if we're men who enjoy acting like women or if we are really women. And this uncertainty makes them very suspicious. Do you understand? I guess so. Hey, Mr. TV star, maybe you shouldn't have talked about it. You know, Edward's marriage. Is he very secretive about it? I'm sorry, I didn't know it was a sensitive topic. Look, I'll make it up to him after the show. Hey, thanks again for doing this and for getting them both to agree. I nearly fell off my chair when you did that moaning thing, Mirabella. You're something else. But you know what? I think you may just help us break viewership records tonight. I really owe you one. One? One lifetime? All right, last commercial, 30 seconds. Stand by, everyone. Back to your positions, please. Studio guest, Mirabella. Coming, coming. OK, stand by. Five, four, three, two. And welcome back. In Singapore. If you've just tuned in, tonight's very special edition turns the spotlight on transsexual. Now, Mirabella, how about your plans? Any new change in your life? Of course. I have to remember to sit down when I go to the ladies. But seriously, I'm still enjoying my new status. Every morning, I wake up and take out my little IC and read out my new name and the part that says sex female. It's like a dream. I still can't believe it. So after that, I go to the bathroom and check. <laughs> but has life changed? Has life changed? Yes, it has. I spent over 20 years waiting to become a real woman. Waiting and waiting and wishing and hoping it would one day happen. And then one day it did. And suddenly, there's this great big empty space. Strange, empty feeling. You mean to say that the sex change operation didn't bring you all the things you had expected? Sure. Brought me a nice set of breasts, the shape and face of a woman, the chance to walk into boutiques and to buy nice clothes. It has given me an operational female anatomy. Is that the right word, operational? so that if a stranger in the night takes me home, he doesn't get a rude shock when the lights go out. But I don't know, I, I still feel like there's a part of me missing, and I don't mean that. Do you mean happiness? Love? Surely these things come with time after you've settled down with your new body and your new life. Warren, I'm 42 years old. Not young and attractive like Lavinia or well-educated like Edward. I know I've been luckier than a lot of my friends. Most of the transsexuals I knew from before have ended up being call girls. 
Very few have managed to find a place that will keep them for long. And basically, we are restless people. You're right. We are very restless by nature. But I'm lucky with work. I've been working in a manufacturing company for almost 15 years now. My boss accepts me. I know the staff like to talk about me. But I tell myself, if they don't like it, it's their problem, it's not mine. After a while, you learn not to get affected by such things. And when you don't bother, they don't either. That's the work front. What about the private side? The private side is more difficult to handle, Warren. Because I feel that I've gone through so much, I constantly expect my life to become drastically better. Before this, I was always feeling insecure, like I didn't quite fit in. So I spent all my time and energy working and saving up enough for an operation which I believed would make me normal. I wanted to be like everyone else so that I could finally live life like an average person and not be a constant joke. But now that I'm here, the last thing I want is to be a normal average woman. I'm terrified of becoming an average woman. What do you mean? I want more than the average woman. More love, more attention. I want to be noticed. I want to be valued. I also want to be respected. And that's when I realized that Things are going to be harder after this exchange. It's no longer about daring to dress up in women's clothes and facing the world. It's about actually being a woman. <clears throat> and that's something that goes beyond wearing a bra, beyond putting on makeup. She's right. No matter how much you prepare for life as a woman, you still will not be prepared when it finally happens. What I'd like to do right now Let's bring the discussion back to you. Mirabella, surely there must be someone out there who will take the time to discover the person that you are. Someone? Someone like you? Well, I suppose for argument's sake, maybe someone like me. And what would your response be if I told you right now in front of your 600, 700,000 viewers? that I truly loved you. Well, I guess you'd have to get to know me first, and I'd have to get to know you better. And if we did all that, Warren, could you see yourself falling in love with me? Maybe we should get back to the subject at hand tonight. <laughs> Lavinia, do you have something to add? Yes, I want to know if someone like you could love Mirabella. <laughs> This is getting a bit out of hand, ladies. Warren, you told us we should be honest. The viewers out there, they all want us to be honest, don't they? Yeah. And I am being honest. I've known you these past months, and I honestly believe that I'm in love with you. Don't you see? You know everything there is to know about me, so what's the big hang-up? We are just three people trying to get on with our lives by correcting a sexual and psychological handicap. And you should know a lot about sexual handicap, shouldn't you, Warren? <laughs> we can come out here on your territory to expose ourselves. Why is it so hard for you to show a little bit of who you really are? We are not that different. I, I think it's time to close the show, ladies and gentlemen. We seem to have covered all our points on the subject. What are you scared of, Warren? Why, is my artificial vagina not good enough for your made-to-measure penis? <laughs> what is going on here? You might as well share your story with everyone, Warren, the way we've shared ours. Tell your wonderful audience why you mysteriously disappeared for over two months earlier this year. Do you know why? 
Because he had to go to Bintan to have his manhood reconstructed. He lost it in an accident. That's how he met the three of us at a sex change clinic in Bintan. Warren Lee was a patient just like us. Mirabella. That's enough. Please just, just stop it. <laughs>